Some of you have decided to raise your own figs. Nothing wrong with that, because we did too. There's a few things that I want to talk to you about today to make sure that you're taking into consideration before you bring your pigs home. And a couple of mistakes that we actually made that I don't want you to make. So stick around and let's talk about it. I know mama pig. I know the little crazies. Huh, all the little crazies that are with you. <laughs> Charlotte. I know, you're getting tired of these guys, aren't you? You're getting so big. It's only six weeks old tomorrow. Yeah, they are. So here we are in the pig barn. <laughs> and let me tell you what, it's been a long journey. It's only been a year since we brought home Charlotte and Wilbur and two other burrows that we had for our feeder pigs, Bacon and Hammy. <laughs> they left us in the fall and they have provided us with amazing meat ever since. We still have a freezer full from those two pigs and they were butchered in September and it's now March, so we still have a long way to go. So there's definitely a few things to keep in mind when you decide to raise your own pigs and some mistakes to avoid when doing so as well. It's definitely a learning process and the more you can learn about taking care of these animals, the better the animals and you will be. One mistake to avoid is not having sturdy enough fencing. Pigs are without a doubt very intelligent animals. Scientists have even attributed them as comparable to apes and dolphins. They will figure out how to burrow underneath standard metal or wooden fencing. And even when you cover it back up, they'll remember how to do it and even teach others how to do it as well. Don't mind the goat noise in the background. Mama goat's being very vocal today. So you really want to purchase special hog panels to keep them enclosed. These panels have narrow openings at the bottom and wider ones at the top. When you have small piglets, however, they can still manage to get through those narrow openings at the bottom. So one thing we implemented was adding chicken wire along the bottom of those panels. That way the little piglets couldn't sneak out. Hog panels can be expensive, but they are sturdy, difficult to bend, and you don't have to worry about them getting damaged. You can also set up an electric fence system. I highly recommend starting your pigs in a smaller area with hog panels, then adding a strand of electric fencing to the inside of that area in order to train them on the electric fence before releasing them into an open pasture with just electric fencing. Yes, they will get shocked. <laughs> Be prepared for that because it's gonna happen and that's okay. Once they get shocked a few times, I assure you about 90% of the time they're going to stay away from it. We also used neon green tape and hung it at various intervals along the fence line so that way they could see that as well because the fencing is very hard to see. It's just that single strand of wire. And then again, we put it on the big fence outside too as a visual reminder that, hey, stay back. <laughs> We've had many times over the winter where the fence shorted out and didn't have any power to it whatsoever and our pigs stayed right away from it. There was an instance last fall where a pig was spooked and ran straight through it, but that hasn't happened since. Another mistake is not giving them enough space. Now, some pigs can be kept in a barn and they'll be perfectly fine in their stall for however long you need them to be. We like to give our piglets and pigs space to roam. We got our first piglets when they were eight weeks old, brought them home, and put them in an area that was 24 feet long by 16 feet wide with hog panels and T-posts and had a six foot by eight foot built shelter that we made for them in that. We had four piglets, one boar, two burrows, and one gilt. They stayed in this area for a few months until we were able to get the electric fencing up and open them up to an acre of pasture. But in the meantime, while they were in this area, they tore it up. What once was a beautiful lawn is now an absolute mess. Perfect for a garden someday, <laughs> but definitely we'll need some uh, upkeep before it becomes lawn again. The positive side of pigs is that they will designate an area for their bathroom and typically stick to it. But as they get bigger, so does their fecal matter and the stench. So if you have them crowded in a pen, you'll discover that that scent can get pretty strong. You don't want to have it near the house if you can help it, and this will also help to reduce flies near your home. We now have our breeding pair, Charlotte and Wilbur, in this little shed converted barn with an acre of pasture to roam around on, root around in, and that's shaded with trees. This reduces the likelihood of them testing the fence because they're bored and need more space. 
Giving your pigs more space also reduces the likelihood of parasites. Since they aren't walking around or rooting in their waste all day, they're less likely to pick up something infectious that can make them sick. If you don't have a single area that you can make for your pigs, you can also consider buying a mobile pig pen or movable fencing to create your own pastures. Who's the big daddy? Who's the big daddy pig? Hi Wilbur! Hi Wilbur! Hey big boy! What are you doing? You can barely see me! Stay back, you're gonna get zapped. Stay back. Good boy! Good boy! Big Duroc boar, Wilbur. He's our big daddy, huh? Mama Charlotte had her, her first litter of piglets this year. Yes. Oh, big boy. Yeah, he's a good pig. Yes, you are. Another mistake new owners can make is not allowing for free feeding or a watering system. Pigs eat a lot. <laughs> and if you have feeder pigs that you're going to butcher, they eat even more as you want to build them up to an adequate size for the butchering. A good rule of thumb is adding one pound of feed per month of age until six months old, then sticking with around five to seven pounds of feed per day, per pig. If you decide to raise a breeding pair of pigs like we did, or even just a breeding sow, that could equal hundreds of pounds of feed per month. Allowing pigs to free range on pasture does help cut down those costs and also offering them healthy alternatives to feed as well. We are blessed to have paired up with a local health and wellness cafe, Deja Brew, who provides us with their leftover salad and fruit scraps to give to our pigs. If you have a garden, investigate what you can give to them from there as well. Just know there are many things that a pig cannot eat, like onions, avocados, and tomato plant stalks and leaves. So you want to be sure you do your research on what to feed them outside of the standard pig feed pellets, oats, wheats, grains, and especially for feeder pigs, corn. If you can invest in an automatic pig feeder or build one yourself, this will save you a ton of time and eliminate having to go out there and feed them a couple of times a day. However, don't be surprised if they destroy a feeder. Starlet, get off my leg. We bought one of those feeders from Tractor Supply, big metal one, you know, they're able to eat out of. And after a few months of use, they figured out how to destroy it. Very annoying. If you don't have an automatic feeder to store 50 pounds or more in and just let them have access to it whenever they need it, then you're going to have to feed them a couple of times a day. One way to help ensure that your pigs are not wasting food is to ensure you feed them the exact amount that they need. Otherwise, it will have the potential to mold or attract flies if just left laying around because they got full and didn't finish their dinner. Another way to keep your pigs from wasting food is to use deep troughs. When a pig has to bend its head down into the trough to eat, it becomes more difficult for the feed to fall on the ground. Any feed that falls out of their mouth will just go back into the trough for eating. And rather than haul out buckets of water every single day, invest in an automatic watering system or make your own. Jason made this one out of a blue barrel that we found cheap online and attached nipples to it at the bottom. The pigs learned it within seconds and have been using it ever since. We do have to fill it up every week, but we are looking to put in a rain catchment system to help with that chore this summer. Another mistake you want to avoid is not providing adequate shelter for your pigs. You don't need a massive barn to shelter pigs. Although if you're anything like me, you really want one or you miss yours. If you're only raising pigs for a few months before they go to butcher, you really just need a three-sided shelter with a roof to keep them safe and protected out of the elements. We built this first one for our pigs and they lived happily in it for several months. A pallet building would even be fine. Doesn't have to be fancy. Shaded areas are definitely a must too. Pigs cannot sweat and therefore can get extremely hot. A wallow will help cool them off, a little pool of water. And if you don't have one, they'll probably create one themselves, like they did here, that'll fill up with rain and just be a big mud pit. But they can get sunburned, especially if they're light skinned. Now, if you do keep pigs during the winter, I, I strongly encourage you to build a more sufficient sh covered shelter for them. So they stay warm in the frigid temperatures and out of the snow and the wind. 
Especially if your pig furrows in the winter time, just like ours did. We actually completed her new shelter a week before our baby piglets were born. Another thing to keep in mind is make sure you are planning for castration, eye teeth removal, and medical supplies to have on hand. If you do have breeding pigs that you are keeping year round, you have to be prepared for certain things to happen, and especially if something happens with the piglets. For example, unless you have a customer that wants to buy a boar specifically, you should castrate your male piglets. The testosterone left in their bodies will create what's called boar taint and is a bad taste to their meat when they're butchered. Not many people like it. It took a few calls, but we were fortunate enough to get a vet out here to castrate our male piglets. It was a fairly simple task that I believe we'll end up doing ourselves in the future, but since this was our first time, we wanted professional help. If you want to check out my video on our piglets getting castrated, click right here. One thing we didn't do, and I regret not doing this, is clipping our baby piglet's eye teeth. The reason you clip their teeth is to protect mom from getting her nipples torn or bitten and so the piglets can't hurt each other or bite your fingers. Being new to raising piglets, we miss this necessity and we'll ensure that we actually do this in the future. And we had a scare once with our boar Wilbur. For some reason, he just went down. Barely breathing, wouldn't move, could barely open his eyes. Had no idea what was going on with him. I had penicillin on hand but I didn't have any needles or syringes. I literally drove as fast as I could to Tractor Supply and probably looked like an addict rushing in there asking for some needles. But we got the medicine into our boy, treated him for a few days, and he was right as rain afterwards. Perfectly fine. Well, again, what happened with him? I don't know. I do know we would have lost him if we didn't do anything. If you can, have penicillin on hand, needles, and syringes. Consult with your vet for any other supplies that they recommend that you have on hand. From what I hear, it may be difficult to get some of this stuff over the counter pretty soon. So you're gonna wanna stock up now. Another thing to keep in mind is planning for a pig's personality. Pigs are sweet, enjoyable animals, until they're not. They can be extremely loving one day and want nothing to do with you the next day. Kind of like humans. No matter if you think your pig is the sweetest thing in the world, treat all pigs with caution. Love them, handle them as often as you can, pet them, and they will be affectionate to you. But be careful still. They are large animals. They can be very dangerous, even if they don't mean to be. And especially if you're raising a breeding sow, a mother pig can be very territorial when it comes to her piglets. Fortunately, we haven't had any issues with Charlotte letting us around her piglets, but that doesn't mean that's always going to be the case. When you first get piglets, acclimate them to your presence. Talk to them. Be around them every day. Let them get used to your voice, your touch. Let them recognize that you bring them their food and water. You can train them to the sound of your voice and they will come to you when you call them. The more your pigs trust you, the better able you will be to manage them. Especially if they do escape from the pen or the fence and you're chasing them down. And another mistake to avoid is trying to save money. Raising pigs isn't cheap. You should have a serious financial plan prepared for what it's going to cost you to raise pigs before you get your pigs. So you're not surprised when the feed bill starts to climb as they grow up in size. You'll have fences to build, shelters to build, food to provide, and respect to cultivate with them. It's a financial commitment and a time commitment. Sit down and make a plan. You may think that raising your own pigs will save you from spending those ridiculous prices at the grocery store. Well, add it all up. Nah, maybe not so much. But you do know where your food is coming from. You do know what is being fed to your food. You do know that your food is living the best life it can while in your care. Raising pigs is far from easy. It's hard work. You've gotta keep their area clean. You've gotta feed them, water them. You've gotta take care of them. You must make sure they're healthy. These are living creatures that God has provided to us to nourish our bodies and feed our souls with their presence. They provide for us. We need to provide for them. They are giving us the ultimate sacrifice. And in the time that they are with us, we need to give them the best life we absolutely can. Good luck on your journey with raising pigs. I wish you all the best. And it truly is an incredible journey. Pigs are wonderful animals. Mm, even if mama does tend to get a little annoyed with the piglets when she's been stuck inside with them for six weeks. <laughs> Anywho. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button below and follow us. We have lots of other videos so far on what's going on in the farm, and we're going to have lots more coming. So we look forward to sharing our journey with you. And please leave us any comments about pigs you're raising, goats you're raising, chickens you're raising, <laughs> or whatever else you have going on as well. We love to hear from our viewers. 
I greatly appreciate you being here. Until later, have a wonderful day. God bless you.